Tonight's little talk is going to be about sharing and silence in prayer groups. And uh, let's begin with a psalm. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for you, for the living God. When shall I behold your face? My tears have been my food day and night. While voices ask, where is your God? Why are you so heavy, O oh my soul? Why are you so weary within me? Trust in God, for I shall praise that holy voice and find my help in that holy face. Welcome to this digital contemplative prayer group. This is a place for all God's people. Whatever your beliefs or doubts, you are welcome here. If you are new to Centering Prayer, just follow the instructions as the session unfolds. You are also welcome to use the silence in any other way that is right for you. Loving God, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering recognizing that we bring the joys and sorrows of our lives here today. If anyone would like to mention silently or aloud expressions of gratitude or concern for ourselves, our families, our friends, our society, or our fragile planet, please do so now. And don't forget to unmute yourself. I give Thanks. gratitude for my physical health and I pray for the physical health and safety of um, all of those who are living near uh, wildfires in California. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Pray for my husband and also pray for a fair and safe election this year. I offer continued gratitude for Lindsay and for Catherine and for this beautiful group. Thank you. Amen. I offer gratitude and thanksgiving for having enough and more than enough food to eat and uh, I thank you in advance, Lord, for helping to provide for the physical needs of uh, all of your children in this country and beyond. I'd like to offer prayer for Ellen, who is still looking for a job in a very difficult economy to find one. God, we trust that you hear our prayers, silent or spoken, wordless or in words.
So I'd just like to talk for a few minutes about sharing and silence in prayer groups, in this prayer group in particular. Last week I talked a little bit about how I'm the one who's giving the talk, but you all also have much wisdom to share. And I gave the example of a workshop I'd done recently where people were giving wonderful suggestions about how to fit in the, the second prayer period. And that topic begs the question of why we don't share more in this group. And one of you wrote to me with some very good suggestions about how we might format such sharing if we were to do it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the relationship between silence and sharing in prayer groups and in this prayer group and the tension between them. I wrote a little bit about the subject in my book, especially in a section called How Much Silence Should Your Group Offer for Group Facilitators in the chapter on starting a contemplative prayer group. And it's something I feel very acutely uh, because I feel that the silence and the intimacy that we develop in the silence without talking to each other very much, without knowing very much about each other, actually has something very profound about it that I, that I treasure and that is quite countercultural. You know, we're so used to in our, in our society, we're so used to thinking about speaking is the way we get to know each other and become closer. And there's, of course, there's huge value in that, but I think one of the really surprising and magical things about a group like this is the way that we're able to feel so close to each other without knowing very much about each other, without talking to each other, and without even being in, in physical contact with each other. We're all in our little tiny boxes, and yet there's some very special closeness between us. And yet at the same time, I do long to know more about you and, and to have the other kind of relationship with you so I feel both of those things at the same time. When I first started a centering prayer group about 13 or 14 years ago, we used a much more talkative Lexio format that corresponded more to the four traditional movements of Lexio Divina. And in two of them, we were invited to share much more extensively than we do in this group. And then just naturally over time, somehow our group moved more and more towards silence and towards this more abbreviated form of Lexio Divina in a way that perhaps had something to do with the, the introverted personalities of the people who were leading and coming to the group. And it also had to do with people telling me how precious the silence was to them and how our group was the only place in their, in their week where they got to be in silence and they didn't have to feel the pressure of talking and being, being talked to too much. One woman said, said that it was the only place in her life where she didn't have to listen to men talking too much. And so that, that happened really not so much through, it wasn't so intentional that it happened that way that our group became like that. At that time I was more actively a spiritual director and so I was um, I was engaged with me in meeting with people and inviting them to share a lot, and that was a natural part of what I was doing. But I was also aware from doing that 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 requires a certain amount of work to, to create a format where people can be safe and they can expose their vulnerability without 
being overwhelmed. So we developed the program for our group that's, that's in my book and that we use in this meeting that, that relies a little bit more on, on ritual than on sharing. There, there are other Centering Prayer groups where they read passages of Open Mind, Open Heart, and other books, and they have discussions, and they do more personal sharing. And I would never say anything against that. I think that that's a very valuable thing, and if that's something that you're yearning for, I encourage you to seek that out. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the way there are kind of two there are kind of two poles and neither one of them is better than the other but there's a little bit of tension between them i do feel sadness that we we don't have the intimacy of sharing in our group but i also am aware on some of the occasions where I've invited you to do more sharing as part of this talk, um, some of you have really enjoyed that and appreciated that, and others of you have told me afterwards that you found it very <laughs> overwhelming and that you hoped that we wouldn't do that again. So, so we're all we're all longing for different things. Some of us are in the midst of finding our voices in in ways that are very important to our journey. Others of us are giving ourselves permission to be silent. You might even feel both those things at the same time. Um, so there aren't right answers to these questions. There's no one way. I just wanted to hold up some, of, some thoughts about that without really resolving them and invite you to value the intimacy that we have here in the silence without too much sharing. I think there's something quite precious about it. But please don't hesitate to make suggestions to me about ways that we might enrich what we have with sharing in various ways. Um, I made a list of a few suggestions, but I'd really, I'd really like to hear your ideas. What are your yearnings? And maybe if you wanted to tell me about them after this group or um, share them with me in an email. I, I have the luxury of receiving emails from you, so I have gotten to know you, some of you, better than you've gotten to know each other because of that. Um, but there is a group in the meditation chapel that there's there are a number of groups in the meditation chapel that have more sharing than this group and I think that there's one that started quite recently that is named something like contemplative conversations and I didn't I meant to look up and see when it was meeting but but um, I can find out more about that if that's something you're interested in. There's also something that I'm going to share with you in, the, in one of our weekly emails. Um, the Shalem School of Spiritual Direction is about to offer in September a Zoom version of their group spiritual direction training, which is really, really wonderful. I've done it down in, in Virginia. Um, and it's, it's a method of doing group spiritual direction with four or five people in a group. It's very structured, and I've been trained in a number of different forms of group spiritual direction, and the Shalem method is definitely one of my favorites. So if you're interested in learning about doing spiritual direction, it's a wonderful training that's suddenly available online in a way that it wasn't before. But also, if you're longing just to be in group spiritual direction, it would give you the experience of that. Um, we could also consider doing some Saturday workshops where there was more sharing involved than there is in this group. 
And another idea I had was that if some of you would like to be assigned prayer partners, I could make a list of people who wanted to share more and, and put you into pairs or, or groups of three or four for you to, and perhaps give you a, a structure um, or you could come up with your own structures um, and guidelines. I could give you some guidelines for how to structure your sharing. So those are just some ideas I'm throwing out. They, they may not, it may not be something you're yearning for, but I just wanted to make more space for if that was something that was coming up for you, that there there is something about our group that's very, it's more silent than some other prayer groups and that may be part of why, why you're drawn to being here, but you may also sometimes feel the constraints of that. And that's all, all right. So make room for whatever is coming up in yourself and allow it to be welcome. Okay, let's turn to our period of centering prayer. Sit with your back straight and your feet flat on the ground or in another stable position your hands on your thighs or in your lap. Gently close your eyes and take a few deep breaths and just notice if there's anything you'd like to adjust before we begin. Any parts of your body that are asking for a little gentle attention, a little stretch or a little wiggle or a deep breath to help them release, or any emotions that would like to gently be touched with your attention before you begin. Just notice how you are, how it feels to be present in your room, the feeling of the air, the weight of your body. And just take a moment to notice who God is for you right now, whatever that might mean for you. What is alive for you in your relationship with the sacred? How is God speaking to you right now in this moment? Renew your commitment to be open and present to the divine. If you'd like, you could silently begin to repeat your sacred word or touch your breath gently with your attention, using your symbol to orient yourself towards God. And during the pray prayer period, whenever you notice that you've become engaged with your thoughts, gently disengage yourself using your sacred word or your sacred breath, if necessary. Loving God, we rest in your sacred silence.
Lindsay, I just want to mention that in the chat, I posted information about the contemplatives and conversation. Okay, thank you, Maggie. You are welcome. We can look at that at the end if people are interested. Yeah. Okay, for tonight's Lexio Divina, I'm going to read a passage from Thomas Merton. I'll read it three times and then I'll invite you to share a word or phrase that resonated. Listen with the ear of the heart. I live in the woods out of necessity. I get out of bed in the middle of the night because it is imperative that I hear the silence of the night alone and with my face on the floor say psalms alone in the silence of the night. The silence of the forest is my bride and the sweet dark warmth of the whole world is my love and out of the heart of that dark warmth comes the secret that is heard only in silence but it is the root of all the secrets that are whispered by all the lovers in their beds all over the world I live in the woods out of necessity. I get out of bed in the middle of the night because it is imperative that I hear the silence of the night alone and with my face on the floor say psalms alone in the silence of the night. The silence of the forest is my bride and the sweet dark warmth of the whole world is my love and out of the heart of that dark warmth comes the secret that is heard only in silence but it is the root of all the secrets that are whispered by all the lovers in their beds all over the world
I live in the woods out of necessity. I get out of bed in the middle of the night because it is imperative that I hear the silence of the night alone and with my face on the floor say psalms alone in the silence of the night. The silence of the forest is my bride and in the sweet dark warmth of the whole world is my love and out of the heart of that dark warmth comes the secret that is heard only in silence but it is the root of all the secrets that are whispered by all the lovers in the in their beds all over the world I invite you to share a word or phrase that resonated for you. Secrets held in silence. It's imperative that I hear the silence of the night alone. Only in silence. The root. Heard only in silence. The silence of the forest. Sweet, dark, warm. Imperative to hear the silence. Dark warmth. Lie with my face on the floor, saying psalms. Let's pray to the, together the night prayer. I'll read it and you can say it together with me with yourself on mute. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for being here tonight. It was wonderful to be with you. Stay around if you want to talk about the the group that that Maggie looked up that's in the chat, um, or if you want to share anything else, and feel free to share with me by 
email if something came up for you about the talk. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Lindsay. Oh, you're welcome, Lydica. Thank you, Thanks. Lindsay. Thank you. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you and good night, Thank Lindsay. You. Thank you. Thank you.